Hello. Bati on, guys. Hello, ma'am. Bati on. Okay, man. Okay, man, mama. Skip na lang, Danay. Ang ay nakita nyo na tuloy. Skip na lang. Hindi ako ka ba lang? Yung solving. Karan na lang ang saran. Okay, mga ano lang, mga mag-7 or if damo na. Okay? So, let's start. Later, prepare your pen and paper again, ha? So that we can answer the question. Wait. Ay. Kita nyo man ko, no? Kita nyo ko? Sam, kita nyo ko? Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma kita ko. Ako ni Chura, ha? Uh Oo. -huh. Hindi. Okay. I, think, I think sa internet yan, eh. Minsan kasi pag mahina yung internet, hindi lumalabas yung video. Hindi yung... <laughs> yung... Ara na, ara na. Ah? Okay. okay. Lumasaba. Sige, go. But while listening, I'm answering the ano na kanina. Answer ka mo while listening. So ah. that multitasking by 7.30. Let's check. Kabud lang. <laughs> Kaya nyo na. Yes, ma'am. Yung nga si L gani. L by no. Okay. So, again, please answer the questions and we'll check it together around 7.30. Okay, if marami nang nakapasok. But for now, try to listen first sa mga Mendelian laws. Okay, so yesterday we've discussed about the um, regulation, temperature regulation, and then introduction sa breeding, and then the monocrossing or what are the, the alleles, what are the genes, anong meaning ng promotion chromosomes. Okay, so now let's proceed to the principle or sa, sa mga foundation ng genetics. So let's start from Gregor, Gregor Mendel. Okay, so he is considered the father of genetics. Okay, and then he has this Men Mendelian law, okay? This, this states that the, the Mendelian laws of inheritance are statements about the way certain characteristics are transmitted from one generation to another. The process of segregation and recombination of genes is governed purely by chance. That's the, that's the main point. Okay, of the Mendelian laws that na sinasabi niya na everything, okay, the crossing, the crossing over, the recombination is purely by chance. Okay, and that the occurrence of each new combination may be predicted according to the rules of probability. Mendelian is probability. Okay. So, the experiment made by Gregor Mendel was on what plant? Peas. Pea, correct. He made an experiment using pea plant. Okay, so I will not discuss um, about the pea plants na because it will be covered by your trap site. The same principle was also used, okay, in, or the same foundation was used in animal breeding. Ganon din sa plant breeding, okay? So, the Mendelian laws, okay, are classified into three, okay? Um, the law of segregation, the law of independent assortment, and then the law of dominance. So, 
one by one, let's discuss the law of segregation first. So, the law of segregation states that during the production of the meat, two copies of each hereditary factor segregate so that offspring acquire one factor from each parent. So, in other words, yung pair, in other words, yung pair of gametes is this, okay? Yung RR and then RR. These are gametes from each of the parent, for example. And then, as the sa gamit formation or sa meiosis natin, each of the allele will be segregated sa next or sa gamit formation. Okay? So, each of the product sa meiosis will have, um, will acquire or will have one factor from each parent. Okay? So, that's just the meaning of the law of segregation. Each factor will be, will be um, passed or will be, will be acquired by, okay, by the um, next cell. Okay? Here, for example, states that two allele coding for the same trait separate during the information. For example, this, wait, this specific cell, okay, um, will undergo meiosis. Okay? So, meron siyang RR. So, when you remember, if you can remember, meiosis will start from 2N and then will end up in 2,4 haploid um four haploid products, okay? So, N, 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 N. That's just the, ang meaning lang yon. meaning lang nun is the alleles or genes from RR will be for sure pass through sa, one, eh, sa pinakaunang N, sa ikalawang N, sa, sa ikatlong N, and then sa ikaapat na N. Yun lang meaning ng segregation will be segregated. Next is the independent assortment. Also known as Mendel's second law of inheritance, the law of independent assortment states that the pair of traits segregates independently of another pair during gamete formation. As the individual heredity factors assort independently, different traits get equal opportunity to together. So, just the same. When, when nag-crossover na siya, okay, so two equally possible arrangement outcomes. It will also be passed sa end point. This is also during meiosis. So, genes for the different traits assort and dependent of each other during gamete formation. So, so lang yung tandaan nyo. So lang yung mga clue word. And the assortment of the allele is purely random. Okay, yung pagmimix nila, that would be random. Or, for example, here. Di ba yung, yung parents natin, for example, is hetero, okay, RRYY. R R Y Y. So, as we under, I'm sorry. Okay, as we undergo meiosis, specifically sa metaphase one, 
Okay? For example, sa metaphase, yun yung time na nagla-line up sila in the middle. Okay? And then, may spindle fibers. So, each, each combination na ipupul ni, ni fiber will actually form, okay, into one cell. For example, here. It is independent to each other and it is assorted as well. For example, hindi automatic na merong RRYY, automatic all capital letters will go here. Sa per cell, hindi ganon. Pwedeng mapunta si small letter R, pwedeng mapunta si, pwedeng mapunta si capital letter R, pwedeng mapunta si small letter R. Okay? It's always, it's always random. Okay, so yung arrangement na to will always be random or and as well independent from each other. Okay, so here. Oh. Different genes assort, okay, independently because they are located on different chromosomes which align randomly at the metaphase plate during meiosis 1. That's it. So, law of dominance. We've already actually discussed this last time. So, this is called third, not first. Ha? According to the law of dominance, hybrid offsprings will only inherit the dominant trait in the phenotype. The alleles that are suppressed are called as the recessive traits. While the alleles that determine the trait are known as the dominant trait. So, dominant um, usually represented by the uppercase letters and then recessive usually re represented by the lowercase. So, ganun. You understand the Mandela law of dominant. Okay, next. The nun. Mendelian inheritance. So, Sa, ano, sa Mendelian inheritance, tatlo lang yun. Um, segregation, independent assortment, and, and um, dominance. Okay? So, everything na related sa inheritance na hindi yung tatlo na yun is the non-Mendelian na. Okay? But it doesn't mean na yung... It doesn't mean that if meron tayong non-Mendelian, it will overpower na or it will void the, the Mendelian loss. No. Actually, these are the additional okay, loss or principles na nasa genetics Then It's just that na hindi na sila cover ni Mendel. Okay? But they don't um, compete with each other. Actually, they are, ano, they are complementary or they can be present in one phenomenon. Okay? A general term, okay, ref that refers to any pattern of inheritance in which traits do not segregate in accordance with Mendel's law. Yun na nga yung sinabi ko. Okay? These laws describes the inheritance of traits linked to single genes on chromosomes in the nucleus, also called quantitative inheritance. Quantitative traits are controlled by many genes, which having small effect and expression of the trait, and the relationship among alleles is usually co-dominance or lack of dominance. Na-discuss na rin natin to kahapon. So first, first non-Mendelian inheritance is linkage. So, when we say linkage, gene loci that are close to each other tend to be inherited together. Okay? So, if magkalapit yung gene, mostly, or mataas yung probability, or malaki yung chance na magkakasama sila ma-inherit, na magkasama sila ma-inherit. Why? Because, for example, if there is is a crossing crossing over okay so when the two chromosome 
for example, we'll try to cross over to malaki talaga yung tendency na yung P arm, for example, yung one arm niya will be transferred here. Of course, yung mga present sa yung mga present sa area na to highly likely will be um crossed over together. Okay, so so yun lang naman. If magkalapit meaning mas malaki yung chance na magkasama sila na ma-inherit. It depends on the proximity of the gene in the chromosome. Okay, so what uh, is what are loci nga or what is the the locus? That's the location of the gene. Okay, so the more na mas malapit yung locus nila, the more na mas ma inherit sila together. That's one. Okay. That's one um, non-Mendelian inheritance. Okay? So, another one, aside from linkage, we also have sex-related genes. Okay? These naman are the expressions of the genes na related sa um, kasarian ng isang animal. So, sex-related genes can be sex-linked. Sex influence and then sex limited. Okay, so please try to be familiar with this because I think this is um this is common sa mga review materials lumalabas sa board exam. Para na tatandaan ko merong questions na related dito. Um, sex link. It is a trait. A trait in which a gene is located into a sex chromosome. Okay? So, yung, yung trait, usually located yan um, sa autosomes, okay? Or sa, sa somatic chromosomes. Okay? Pero, in this case, sa mga sex link, located yung specific trait or located yung yung gene for that specific trait sa sex chromosome. Um for example sa sa chicken. Okay? Sa chicken yung trait na tinatawag nating bari. Barring or bard usually tinatawag silang um, barred chicken. Okay? Barring trait sa chicken is said to be located. Barring is ganito, yung yung lines. Okay? That's the barring trait or yung color ng, ng, ng plumage nila. That's it. So, usually, sa, sa yung barring trait or yung barring gene ng ng chicken na katulad nito is located sa sex chromosome nila. Okay? Located sa sex chromosome. So, located siya sa X chromosome. Yung barring trait. So, that's, that's why. That's why tinawag siya na sex link. Because nakadepende yung barring trait na to or your plumage color na to sa X um, sex chromosome. Okay? Next is, another example I mean is the color of this cat. So, the color of this cat is actually also dependent sa gene na makikita sa sex chromosome ng isang cat. So, that's it. Yung trait is nakadepende sa gene na located the sex chromosome. Okay. So, sex link yun. Next 
is sex influence. When we say sex influence, it means that the expression of the trait, ha, meaning meaning dito is the expression of the trait, depends on the hormones naman. So, yung pinagkaiba ni, ni sex um, link is that the gene of a specific trait is present sa sex chromosome. For example, sa X lang or sa Y. On the other hand naman, sa sex influence, yung gene is present sa both male and female. Okay? So, if present siya sa male and female, yung expression niya lang is nakadepende sa hormones. Okay? Yung expression niya lang is nakadepende sa hormones. For example, um, the, the presence or the expression of male baldness. Okay? Usually, the reason why um, the reason of the male pattern baldness is the reason for that is the presence of androgens or estro or estrogens. That's why related to hormones. Okay, so the the male pattern baldness that is expressed differently in males and females usually because its expression depends on the androgens and androgens androgens and estrogens okay and that is controlled by a single gene that is dominant in males but recessive in females so that, for example, men who inherit the gene from either parent lose hair as they age, whereas women do so only if they inherit it from both parent and thus homozygous. Okay, it is influence. So, yung gene na pinag-uusapan dito is hindi yung gene for hair, ha? It is a gene na specific for the secretion of the hormone androgen and estrogen. That's it. So male and female are both expre- are both um have that specific gene. However, yung gene na yan is mas common or mas mas dominant sa male. That's it. The same application sa mga horns. For example, the sheep has the male sheep has richer or has more abundant androgens. Okay, that's why mas um prominent yung yung horn compare sa female. The same principle lang sa male pattern baldness. Next is the Sex limited. Yung clue word natin dito is one sex only. So when we say sex limited, of course, like example, the production of egg in in female chickens. Next is thank you, Shem, for your solution. <laughs> Try to send it to group chat para may comparison kayo. Sige, ma'am. Sorry for interruption. <laughs> Um, another is, of course, the presence of the mammary glands, um, the, the capacity to bear, to bear a child. Of course, sex, mga sex-limited trait yun. So, ito naman, more on the physiology na ng animal. More base, base na siya sa physiology. Okay, types of sex chromosome. So, guys, always um, try to remember this because I'm sure talaga um, na related sa mga sex chromosome, lalawas yun sa exam. Um, so, we have 
different types of sex chromosome, okay? The homogamet, homogametic, and then heterogametic, okay? So, when we say homo, the same. And when we say hetero again, it's different, okay? So, there are two of the same chromosomes. For example, XX. And then, the hetero XY. Typically, in mammals, of course, our sex or gender is dependent sa kung anong sex chromosome meron tayo. So, what is the... Ano yung homogametic gametic sa mammals? Or let's say sa humans. Male or female? Female. Okay. So, the homogametic... Um, um, mammals, okay, are females, correct? XX, female. And then here is male. So, if you look at the difference here, where do you think is the X and where do you think is the Y? Pink or blue? Hello? Based on this picture, where do you think is the male? Or where do you think is the X? And where do you think is the Y? Chromosome. Or allele. Pink. Pink yung? Pink yung female. heter. Uh, yung female. Ah, hindi. Yung male. Charo. No, I'm just asking if saan yung X and saan yung Y. Uh, yung Y yung blue. Yung Y, yung y blue, tapos X is yung pink. Mm -hmm, correct. Because guys, for example, sa human, di ba ilan nga yung chromosomes ng human? Ilang pair? Ala. Twe tw <laughs> Twenty ba or four? <laughs> four. Ano ba? Baka, baka animal itong naisip ko. <laughs> 36? 36? 36? 40? 40? Chromosomes yung human. Pero meron tayong 23 pairs. Okay? Ah, yan. 23 pairs pala. Iba yung pairs na tayo. So, sa 23 pairs na yan, just to explain, for example, sa human, 22 yan yung autosomes. 22 yan yung mga body, body chromosomes. Okay? And then, 1 yan... We're talking about pair, ha? Pair. Yes, ma'am. Pair yan yung mga autosomes or yung mga body chromosomes natin. And then one pair yan, dyan yung sex. Okay? So that's how we determine sex because yung itsura ng mga chromosomes is like this. There, there. Okay? Kunwari, mga body cells to, 23... At 22, I mean, sorry. It will vary sa pinaka-end. Because if the class chromosome is yung appearance niya would be like this. Okay, the, the, the one pair for the sex, that is confirmed na female yan. Pero if yung appearance ng last pair, sa uh, human chromosomes would be like this. Okay, that would be the male. Or usually, ganito yan yung appearance nila. Okay? Female, um, female and then male. The, the Y chromosome in male is shorter. Okay? So that's why, that's why it's, it's just easy to determine if heterogametic siya, or if male siya, or if homogametic siya, or if female siya. Okay? Because the the X chromosome, the females, is much larger. Okay? So, in chicken, okay, mammals yun, di ba? In chicken or in birds, it is different. Um, They are represented by ZZ or ZW. Okay, as their sex chromosome system. So, the ZZ 
when we say ZZ, is it homogametic or hetero? Homo. Homo. Okay. So, this is for male or female? Female. Female. Incorrect. Or ah. the situation is different. Ah, iba pala. Ah. Okay. So, yung kittens na female is ZW or the hetero. So, usually, yung question, board exam will be something like this. Um, which among the following represents a the heterogametic um, chromosome in the head? Like that. So, dapat hindi ka nakamute. Meron ka pili. Sorry, oh my goodness. <laughs> so, so the question na ako. <laughs> So the question would be something like na um what is the heterogametic sex chromosome in chicken? So when we say hetero, it means that it's the male. Okay? So in chicken I mean in birds, I'm sorry, not chicken lang, birds. Something like that, yung analogy na kina na kailangan yung ma-memorize. Sa birds, ano yung male? Hetero or or homo? Homo, male? Homo ba? Yung, yung male is homo? Correct. And then, yung male sa mammals is hetero. What makes this true? Because yung birds sa male nila is ZZ. Okay? And sa mammals, yung male nila is XY. Okay? So, remember this analogy or remember this um, association. Depende na, y Depende na yun sa inyo if anong style yung gusto nyo. Pero something like that, you need to remember. Paano mabalik yun? Okay, hindi ko alam paano mabalik. Okay, next. Ano yun? Um, aside from linkages and aside sa mga sex-related genes, isa pang non-Mendelian inheritance okay, is the multiple alleles. There are more than two variations of a gene at a given locus. So normally, um, multiple alleles happen in nature. We can usually observe that um, more. Okay. Usually, if we are asked na how many alleles are present in one trait, we usually answer na dalawa lang. For example, ganito, nasanay lang tayo na AA. Okay? Nasanay lang tayo na BB. Ito rin ang BB ko. Nasanay lang tayo sa ganyan. Okay? So, this is, for example, one trait na, di ba? For example, this is for brown eyes. Nasanay lang tayo sa dalawang alleles. Pero usually, Yung, or in reality, kung how our body works, how people in um, animal breeding or genetics field, they use multiple alleles. Or 
they are aware na hindi lang dalawa, hindi lang AA, hindi lang CC, meron tayong parang ganito. In this case, this is a rabbit. Okay? Hindi lang na-express into two yung traits. Hindi lang siya um, brown rabbit, brown rabbit, hindi lang siya black rabbit. Hindi lang ganon. So, that's the reason why they have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Usually, three alleles, or alleles. Okay? And usually, they are represented by superscript or subscript. Okay? So, if may ganitong itsura ng allele, or they have, um, let's say, one, two, three, three alleles, this is chinchilla color. Himalayan. Ibang allele naman yung representation. Okay? One, two. Usually kasi ito lang naman yung tinuturo sa atin. One or two. Dominant recessive. Pero sa ibang case, hindi. For most of the case, hindi lang ganyan. Okay? Especially this is also very common na may multiple alleles. Hindi lang dalawa, kundi tatlo, minsan apat sa ating mga quantitative traits. Okay? Kasi maraming variation yung mayroon yung gene na yun. That's why we needed more than, or that's why it has um, multiple alleles. Okay, next. Next principle is the non-Mendelian inheritance. When we say non-Mendelian, uh, uh, when we say pleiotropy, um, it is a single gene that is able to influence multiple traits. Okay? So, one gene will influence um, two or more traits. Okay? Will affect multiple characteristics. For example, this one. This is a frizzled um, feather chicken. Okay? The the responsible for this appearance is of course the frizzled feather gene. Okay? The frizzled feather gene. But this frizzled feather gene does not only um concentrate sa pagiging sa pagiging frizzled feather appearance ng isang chicken. Also, it will affect not just the feather but also the feed intake and also the metabolism. Okay, I'm just not sure because I think the chickens with frizzled feather um, gene is also has, I'm not sure lang if mas mabilis yung metabolism or mas slow. Basta it has something to do with the feed intake and with the metabolism. Okay? And another example is actually the um, albinism. So, there's a specific gene for albinism, okay, for the production of melanin. It does not only affect the color of your skin, okay? It also affects that specific gene also affects your um, color of eyes. It also affects the color of your hair. Okay? So, ganun lang. One gene, again, dytropy, under non-Mendelian inheritance, single gene influence multiple traits. So, that's what you need to remember. Multiple alleles. The opposite naman, the opposite naman of your polygenic trait, I mean, the opposite naman of your pleiotropy is your polygenic trait or inheritance. So, if si, si pleiotropy is one gene, 
to multiple traits. Okay. Si polygyny naman is different. Yung kay polygyny naman is um, several genes into one trait lang. This is common in in our um, quantitative um, characteristics, okay, or trait. Like for example, yung yung weight ng ng swine, yung marbling score ng isang beef, yung production ng milk. That is because of several genes, okay, or because of multiple genes. It is not dependent on one genes lang. Okay? Mostly quantitative yon. Quantitative traits yung under sa polygenic trait. Next, another. So, ilan na? Um, linkage. Linkage can be sex, sex-related gene. Um, linkage. Ano pa nga? Multiple alleles, pleiotropy, polygenic, and now, the last, I think, non-Mendelian inheritance is the extra nuclear inheritance. When we say extra nuclear, it means that it's outside the nucleus. Wait lang po. Yung aso. Okay. So, again, um, it means na yung outside the nucleus. I will ask you a question. Um, saan makikita yung DNA? Nucleus. The nucleus, right? However, merong mga DNA na makikita outside the nucleus. Okay? Or sa ibang organelle. So, extra nuclear inheritance wherein a trait was transmitted from the parent to the offspring not nuclear in nature but involving other organellular genetic material. So, among the organelles, okay, aside from the nucleus, we can see DNA sa mitochondria. Okay? Pero majority pa rin ng, ng genes or ng DNA can be found in the nucleus. It's just that na merong mga mga DNA na present sa mitochondria. Okay? So, merong mga DNA or traits na makikita lang sa mitochondria. So, are you aware na, na sinasabi ng iba na yung intelligence or yung DNA for intelligence can be or can only be found sa mother because that specific DNA is found in the in the mitochondria it's not actually paha proven pero merong mga mga argument about that if you've already heard about that na if you're if you are an intelligent person thank your mom something like that but you know, it's still um, debatable. Hindi pa po. Pero, yung basis ng ganyang kismis or ganyang theory is based sa structure ng egg cell and then sa structure ng sperm cell. More likely, okay, yung mga mitochondrial DNA na tinatawag natin comes from or came from the maternal Side. Why? Because rich or mas, mas malaki yung mga mitochondria sa egg cell. And because of this um, anatomy ng sperm cell, very limited lang. Usually yung ulo ng sperm cell is all nucleus na yon. Or in generally yung sperm cell, generally the nucleus lang. The nern. Okay? So, mas 
mas ano, mas lower or sometimes nga um very 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 minute lang yung organelles sa sperm cell aside from the nucleus. This is um different naman when it comes sa egg cell because abundant sa mitochondria sa egg cell. Malaki pa. That's why yung mga yung mga mitochondrial DNA din is mas marami sa mother side or sa maternal maternal side. Okay, compare sa paternal Okay. So, before I proceed sa population genetic, meron bang mga question? Meron bang mga clarification? Because if none, um, naka-dinner na ba kayo? Medyo gutong kasi ako. Not yet. The same. <laughs> so, ano, um, let's be back na lang mga ano siguro 7.15. Okay, since recorded naman kahit hindi maka-attend yung iba, meron naman five tayo. Mga 7.30 siguro, after 7.30, let's try to answer our, our, the quiz, okay, or the question that I sent you earlier. Please try to answer that with solution, okay, and let's be back 7.30. Let's have first dinner. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Ma'am, Carl, Shara. Ah, ah. Ano? Wala, Charot lang. Awa. Let's eat.